Uh, we're going to start from the very beginning, uh, assuming you have no experience with music recording or working with MIDI. The first thing you're going to need is a sequencer or a DAW or a MIDI editor. You can find a list of them here at Wikipedia. You can see there are many. If you have a Mac, it comes with GarageBand. That works perfectly fine. You can uh, use some of the other more common ones like Reaper. Uh, you can spend some money and get a professional level one uh, like Logic Pro X, Pro Tools, or Reason. Uh, there's so many. So look around, um, find one that works for you. Anything basic will do. Uh, so let's get started. I use Logic Pro X. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a new project. And uh, that's going to prompt me to create a track. I'm going to use a software instrument track. And I just hit create. Uh, here's my track. And in order to generate drum sounds, I'm going to assign a drum kit to the track. Any drum kit will do. Just keep in mind that at this point, the drum sounds are not going to translate to the Beat Buddy. We are going to add another drum set uh, in the Beat Buddy Manager. This is just to approximate or come as close to as possible as we can to our final product. Set your tempo according to your song and the time signature. I'm just going to leave it at default for now just uh, to keep things simple. So let's look at our first method of inputting and generating MIDI notes. Musical typing. So you can see this little keyboard here and this allows you to tap out the beat um, on your keyboard. All right, so there's our kick and there's a snare. Okay, so we're going to go to the record feature. And as it's recording, we will tap out the beat as uh, tightly as we can according to the rhythm. Okay, and there you go. We have generated some music uh, MIDI notes here, as you can see in the track. Now we want to take a closer look at them and be able to manipulate them. So we're going to open up the editor, which is usually this scissor feature here, and you will see the notes we have created. Now you will notice um, on some of the beats, I did not come as uh, close to the beat as I want to. So this is where we can manipulate the notes. And one way to do that is to simply just grab them with your mouse and you click down and you can drag them into place and uh, put them on the beat as you would like them. Another way to do that is to drag and select the notes you would like to move. And you can hit quantize and quantize will nudge the notes to the closest beat and that will tighten up the rhythm for you. Now I'm going to delete these because uh, we just want a short loop. Okay, oh, I'm going to get that down to just the second bar there. All right, so this is how the Beat Buddy works. It takes a loop like this and it just plays it as a loop over and over again. And then it allows you to transition to different loops. So we can simulate what the Beat Buddy is going to do by just opening the loop feature, right, and closing it down to the loop that we want. You can make a loop two bars, four bars, six bars, eight bars, as long as you like, because you may want to add variations on the beat. But in this case, we're going to keep it as simple as possible. So if I go to the beginning, we can listen to the beat. Okay, and with the loop, we can see that the loop is working out okay, and we're not missing any notes. Now this is quite simple, so we want to add some uh, complexity to our beat and put in a hi-hat perhaps. So we can go back to the musical typing uh, feature. We're going to hit record, and we're going to find our hi-hat, which is right there under H for hi-hat in this case. And we can just tap the hi-hat and it will add it to this MIDI selection here. So let's try that. Okay, there we go. 
So we can see our hi-hat here. Okay, and it's not exactly on the rhythm. So we'll quantize these notes, or we can drag them if we like. But it's nice to be able to select a group. Makes it uh, more time efficient. And there we go. So let's hear our beat so far. Fair enough. All right, so let's move to our second method of inputting notes, and that is the pencil method. And if we go into our toolbox, we have a pencil tool. We can select that. And this allows us to simply draw in the notes when and where we would like them. So I'm going to add a, a second kick. Well, I don't want that. Let me go back to the pointer and drag this down to the kick. Sorry, got that on the wrong line. There we go. So now I've drawn in a kick accent there, and let's hear it. Nice. And I can do the same if I want to add uh, some complexity to the hi-hat. There we go. There we go. And there we go. Oops, missed a note there. There we go. Good. So now we have a basic pop beat, 4-4 four, four time, 120 beats per minute, and it sounds pretty good. So those are some of the simple methods. There are lots of things you can do to change the style and the nuances of a beat. Uh, you can mess around with the velocity of a note. Okay. And, of course, you can add very complex fills if you like. But we're going to leave it as simple for now, and we'll come back to those uh, points in future lessons uh, because it can get a little complicated. Let's move on to a third method of creating your own beat, and that is simply just using beats that other people have made for you and then manipulating them. You can find MIDI beats online, I suppose, um, but if you have a Beat Buddy, it comes with a Beat Buddy library, and that is a good resource because you can find all of these notes um, laid out for you in the Beat Buddy um, resources. Okay, so if I go to the pop section here, I find a beat that I think comes close to what I want. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, to demonstrate this, create a second track. I'm going to mute this one for now, and I'm going to go back to my finder there, and I'm just going to grab this file, and I'm going to drag it right into the track line. Okay, and there we go. I don't know what happened there. I got a bunch of stuff. All right, let's just delete this, and I'm going to pull this right up to the front so it plays on the loop. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and there's the beat that I pulled in. And now um, let's just give it a listen over the loop. Good. Okay, now I don't want all of this. I just want the uh, length of the loop. And you'll notice if I play it over top of the two, the two beats together, and they synchronize. Right. And again, I can uh, move these notes around. I can pencil in accents if I like. Um, and add things. Okay. So uh, maybe I just want to add a snare hit there. Okay. Something like that. Or I can um, change the um, part of the drum set that it's using. So right here it's using a closed hi-hat. I can highlight this whole line and move it up and down. And just change it to a different hi-hat sound. Right. So you can manipulate the notes as we have looked at by dragging, by penciling in. You can change the velocity if you want to fool around with that. And uh, again, we'll talk about that later. So those are some different methods you can use to customize and create your own beats. Mind you, be prepared to spend some time fooling around with this and 
sort of learning the nuances of how drum beats will sound and what you can do with them and all of the variations that they uh, offer. 